everyone. So once again, we're back looking at the uh, Trans Am bike race across the United States. Um, what I've actually done is reround the tracker back to the 9th of June, so four days ago now. The reason I've done this is because I just want to look at Janie Hayes and the bridge that she has made across to kind of the leading four. It's just quite incredible, really, uh, how she's managed to catch up. You know, if we start playing the uh, track here, and we'll just speed up a little bit. We can see she's kind of in the no man's land here between my, behind Michael, and you've got the other kind of three up here. For Peter Anderson had his issues, you know, Benjamin Colwell had his issues, uh, and Evan and John Lester there as well. So what we'll just get this going kind of quick. But this gap between them that we saw there just comes down. It's it's quite incredible, really. You know, as a veteran of the race, she obviously knows how her body works and uh, as using that to her full advantage. So I'm going to slow down here. And we can just see that she's made it across uh, and catches up with Ste and Michael here. It's quite incredible, really, which this brings us back to live now. And she's now in front of uh, Sofan and, and Michael. So you might have heard me say about Benjamin Carwell. Sadly, he retired from the, the race yesterday due to some Achilles issues. It's a shame to see anyone have to scratch from the race. Though I did talk about uh, the other day the fact that the way he was pushing his body, not stopping for much sleep, and that I did wonder if that might start to pay, he might start to pay the price for that later in the race. It seems that maybe he paid the price earlier on. Um, I understand the issue is related to his Achilles, but when you're riding your body that hard and you're not giving it, you know, five hours sleep a night, it's not just to sleep, but when you're stopped, you know, your muscles can relax and repair a bit. If, if he wasn't really doing that, the, the, you know, possibility of injury and overuse does, does grow a lot. So it's a real shame for him to see him leave. We now have, you know, a solid five here at the front. Evan has managed to pull out a lead. He's really found his uh, you know, rhythm over the past two days and has pushed that. John Lester is in second, still there. You know, I, I still like him. He's riding really smart. He's riding really strong. Janie, just incredible. You know, can't count her out for anything at the moment. Michael and Sofan. You know, they're approaching this Newton bike shop. You know, I know you will all be on the Facebook group. You will be able to see the videos and photos that they're putting up there. I won't regurgitate that here, but I suggest you go and have a look at that. Evan looked good. John looked pretty good. So it'll be interesting to see how the others look. What I wanted to do was uh, go to the race flow. And we can really, if we you know, to get this zoomed in to the right amount here. So you can see Evan, you know, was behind John for the past few days and, you know, floating around Sofan was up here in third as well. What we've seen over the past few days, is you can see Sofan is just really falling off the pace, slowing a lot, even though he's sleeping. He's not slept much here, you know, five, six hours. But last night he's had a really long sleep. He's obviously well aware of his body, well aware that he is suffering a lot uh, and has taken a long sleep. But you can see here, even after his long sleep, his pace is just really, you know, off the others. So I wonder if there's something going on there for him. He's obviously having some issues. What they are, I don't know at the moment. If we can find out, that'd be interesting. Uh, but it'd be good to see how he does in the next day or so, whether he can recover. Now, Evan has come from kind of second and third. His pace is just really hot. You know, he, he's got in a rhythm and he's pushing on. His speed is faster than the others. He didn't take much sleep the night before last. Last night, just after Newton Bike Shop, he was in and out of that place like a... You know, Formula One pit stop, down the road to a hotel, took a really good sleep in a hotel, uh, you know, eight hours there. So he's rested and he's pushing on hard. Even with his eight hours sleep, he's still out in the lead by a margin. Him and John just kind of overlapped in Newton a little bit as John arrived and Evan was leaving. John with a good six hours sleep. So I'm back on the road now. The gap between these two, 2,585. 2,517, so, you know, 60 miles, you know, 70 miles, it's not a lot there, you know, Evan's, Evan's pushing, but John's still following well, you know, but we drop back to the next three and there is a gap, 
sulfan is on you know 2400 so that is an 85 mile gap again you know five six hours on the road it's not a huge amount you know i'd expect janie and michael to you know push back up you can see janie here has been pushing hard with less sleep compared with the others so it'll be interesting to see how she does over the next few days and whether she she can maintain that or whether she starts to suffer a bit from the big effort that she has made to catch up um Evan is looking good right now, you know, he's a veteran, he, he knows his body, we know he's good because he's finished, you know, third, you know, you can't discount him, you can't, you know, John the rookie, it's going to be, it's, it's unknown territory for him, so, you know, the, uh, the safe man would put their money on Evan at the moment, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't discount Janie either. Who knows what's going to happen over the next few days. We're going to have Janie, Michael and Sofan come into Newton. You know, you'll be able to see how they're looking on the videos. We might get a better indication of how they're feeling. You know, whether they're tired, whether they're feeling all right. Seen a few interviews with Janie where she seems good still. But, you know, everyone likes to play poker with how they're feeling really. And no one's going to kind of come out and say, oh, I'm feeling terrible. It's going to be a good race as it hots up into the kind of, you know, second half. Now, one thing to note, actually, is uh, I was corrected. My call on Leo Wilcox, the record on that, I thought Leo sped up a bit, but apparently Mike slows down towards the end. Um, he knew he was going to win the race in 2014 quite happily, and he didn't push himself so hard the last few days, and that's why Leo manages to catch up with him. So, you know, Evan's looking out in front of that record, whether or not Evan can maintain that pace, but we know Mike is actually going to slow a bit, so... That gap to Leo will go backwards with from Mike rather than Leo coming forwards. So Janie is looking good for that kind of first women's record at the moment. Really good. A lot of other people coming down out the mountains. This race for the top 10 is going to be really hot. Way too early to call. Cool. There's a lot of people here. People have been moving up and down this. One thing I do want to point out is this guy, Michelangelo Pacifico. What an awesome name. You know, really, really great guy. He's finished some good races. He's a, he's a pretty good guy. He's been moving up steadily. Hippie we looked at the other day, you know, down finally out of the mountains. He's a bigger guy. He doesn't like the mountains. But once he gets onto the flat, if he can get back in his rhythm, I'd expect him to be moving up some places as well. You know, he's going to be looking good. The next woman back here, Amy, that gap there, you know, Janie isn't going to have a challenge for kind of first woman finisher. But, uh, you know, a couple of women within close call there. Megan, you know, second and third women. All counts, doesn't it? It's going to be a good fight for that. But uh, top 10, top 20 is still wide open. And there's still people all the way back here. It's going to be a long, tough race for some people. Again, we can expect Doug to start meeting people in the next day or so. And that's going to be really, really interesting for him. All right, so any comments or questions, just uh, reach out and look out for the uh, Newton Bike Shop Facebook group and the live feed from there, and we'll see how people are looking, and hopefully we can start making a judgment on, uh, you know, who's going to be really reaching out for the win and who's going to be kind of having to follow those pushing. Cheers.